<sighs> Hello. Happy January 1st, 2021. Happy New Year. And to have my protection, my wheel protection here. So it's actually pretty good. It's all gone. It's empty. Um, yeah, so I just want to do a quick year in review kind of a recap. Um, you know, it's, we all know what this year was like. It was a shit show. Um, 2020 was nothing to cry home about. Um, a lot of people had a lot of problems. Um, a lot of people um, lost loved ones. Um, a lot of people lost jobs. A lot of people um, just lost it. You know, um, it, it was an insane year, and I don't blame anybody for, um, you know, losing their sanity and just kind of um, going off the deep end, you know, a bit. Or I say, I don't blame them if they have panic attacks and stuff. You know, I know a lot of people they struggle with anxiety. And this year was not the year for anxiety. Um, if you have that type of issues. Um, but when the year started off, you know, everybody was kind of super upbeat going, yay, going to be the roaring twenties. Boy, what a roar that was. Um, you know, it started off with us nearly getting into world war three with Iran. That's a thing. I'm sure you all forgot that. It seemed like, you know, 10 years ago, but no, it was beginning of. 2020 um australia was on fire uh what else um and then um you know everybody's got to wear masks uh well everybody has to wear everybody should wear masks not many do um the coronavirus quickly became the biggest thing of the year um it started ramping up around february um, March, it was fully here, and, uh, it was around March is when, um, they sent me home from work. I didn't lose my job. Fortunately, I'm very fortunate that I didn't lose my job. Um, we all started working from home around late March, um, and I've been working from home, from home ever since then. Um, and it took until just from then till now, till they finally got a vaccine that they trust, and they've tested and they're rolling it out to people, and it's going to take another maybe six, eight months before most people get it, get the vaccine. Um, and that's about when I, th I would think the world's going to calm back down, hopefully, as long as things don't happen. But um, as for this year, or this past year, I should say, there, there was other things that, you know, was going on with it. Of course, when this pandemic thing first hit, um, you know, once they sent me home and we all didn't know exactly how to deal with it. We all kind of assumed, um, you know, oh, this is really bad, you know, and we were, some of us were like way overprotective. I know I was, um, you know, yeah, it's, it's good to, if you go out to wear masks and stuff, wash your hands. But at first, like it, it seemed like everybody was like kind of going a little overboard with the protection like stores of course had like major lines you know just to get groceries um the first time i went to a store for like three weeks after i didn't go outside of my house for like three weeks after they sent me home from work um but i had to go to the store and of course i wore a mask i wore rubber gloves um and i was very conscious to anything that i touched with one hand with the glove not to touch any of my other property with like, like, you know, like my wallet or my credit card. Um, cause I was like, all right, if someone coughed on this can of corn or whatever I was buying, um, you know, or breathed on it, it can, you know, transfer to my glove and my glove could transfer to, um, whatever I'm, you know, my, something in my pocket, like my wallet. Um, so I, it was things like that, that we all kind of like went a little overboard with. And I think it was a little too unnecessary cause I think, um, you know, they, we weren't sure like how long 
the virus can like last on surfaces. But anyway, um, I think that's also kind of one of the problems that rose later is that um, people were getting a little bit too laxed. Um, and so, and it was weird. I know here in New Mexico, we're actually, we're pretty good for a long time with having very low percentage of cases. Everybody was doing the proper thing. Um, but then I kept seeing people like still like go to their friend's house and just, you know, party and not partying, but like gather together and stuff with people. Um, and I know as someone who, um, wishes to be a pro photographer, I was like, I should photo journalist this whole thing. Um, so I went and I drove downtown one day. It was some weird, like just random day, uh, a couple of weeks after the whole thing started. I was like, I'm going to go and capture the empty streets of the city and, you know, see how eerie it is and, you know, being empty. I got downtown. It wasn't empty. There's still cars driving around. There wasn't like many people in the street. Um, but like, it wasn't like how you saw in some major cities like New York. It was like eerily, you know, um, empty and stuff. So it wasn't like that here. Um, of course here, like, um, we don't have very many people that like walk the streets anyway. So most people do drive around everywhere. Um, but yeah, so I didn't really take pictures, you know, cause I was like, it looks normal. <laughs> it doesn't look like, you know, something to, uh, uh, take pictures of for, you know, future generations to record for history or something. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, it's been such a weird, weird, weird year. Um, thankfully, uh, nobody close to my family, uh, at least that I know of, um, has been impacted by this, you know, health wise. Um, I don't know. Um, like of course my parents, my sister, my brother, um, you know, his wife and all them, they, you know, they, nobody got sick. Um, you know, knock on wood. Um, the vaccine is going to, you know, come out. My sister got the vaccine already. Um, uh, my brother actually got a vaccine too. Um, surprisingly, um, I know like a couple of friends who have had scares of, you know, maybe getting it. Um, they might've got it. So, um, you know, I just hope that no one gets it because people say, Oh, you know, you're probably going to survive it if you get it. But, um, I keep seeing things about the side effects of it. So even after you have it, you might have lung problems for maybe the rest of your life. We don't know. Um, but other than that, it was a really quiet year, you know, for me. I, I stayed home as much as I could. And then, yeah, every once in a while I would go out and we would, you know, I wasn't doing many photo shoots, especially for the first, like, couple of months, you know, these first, like, two months or so that uh, things was going on. Um, and I would decide, okay, yeah, let's go and do a photo shoot. And we would do it. Um, I would be outdoors, you know, distance from whoever I was shooting with. Um and I, I did a couple of shoots. I tried to keep busy. Um, the one good thing about, you know, this year, I mean, I tried to look at um, positive aspects of, of how everything was going this year. Um, one thing is, um, I think since most people weren't driving as much, that probably um, contributed a lot less to um, our carbon footprints. I know I definitely drove a lot less. Um, I haven't been buying much gas. That's good. And... Uh, I know we, uh, we've done a lot of um, ordering um, food online, like, you know, like Uber Eats or, you know, um, DoorDash. Uh, so it's been, good, you know, a good boon for people who work in that type of industries. Um, you know, they've, they've seen a big rise in, in that. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of, it still was a bad impact for a lot of restaurants that maybe, you know, didn't support that type of service or maybe they didn't have, you um, high visibility to, you know, get the clientele to order from them, like, you know, mom and pop type of uh, restaurants and stuff. Local businesses, I know they heard it everywhere. It, it was just really bad. And then, of course, this year, I've, I mean, I've seen this for a long time, many years, that there's a segment of the population that are just 
for lack of better words, are dumb. They're dumb people. I'm not going to, you know, mince words. Um, something as simple as wearing a mask. It's not that big a deal. In fact, you know, I, I found this, you know, yesterday, 2021. It looks cool. I'm going to wear it for a few days. Um, you know, and <laughs> I joked to my friend, um, going to a store and seeing everybody wear masks. It's like, all right, I live in Konoha. Everybody's ninjas. That's how nerdy I am. Um, so I don't see the big deal of it. Yeah, my glasses get foggy, you know, when it's cold out and I go from like outside to, to inside, you know, when I have my mask on. Big deal. So it gets, it gets foggy. It You can breathe in it. Um, doctors wear masks all day long. Nurses wear masks all day long and they're fine. You know, it's inconvenient. Put up with inconvenience for a short time, um, you know, to help others. And that's the biggest thing that, um, biggest takeaway that I've seen, not just over this last year, but there's a whole segment of the population. And unfortunately, they they tend to fall on the right wing spectrum. I'm not going to make this political, but that's usually where they fall. Um, that... They're selfish. Um, they can't fathom why they would do something like simple enough wearing a mask to help others. They think, oh, look, I'm wearing a mask. I've seen stupid like memes about um, this guy who is a, uh, you know, he puts up drywall and he wears dust masks. And yet the drywall dust still gets in his face. It's like, well, if this gets in my face, how is this going to protect me against a virus? That's not the point. The point of this is, yes, you do get some protection from droplets of people spitting on you, but also it protects other people. You don't know if you have it. Thus, you don't know if you can be, you know, talking and spilling on people. So wear a mask and it protects you. It's proven science. And that's the thing. It lasts, you know, for years, you see more and more people just denying science and being idiots. And it's frankly disheartening um and you, you see it in a lot of aspects of of this last year don't even get me started on QAnon, all that you know and the conspiracy garbage um we have more idiots now than i think we ever had maybe we don't have more maybe it's just that the idiots that we've always had um have all now grouped together and um, all under one singular, you know, faction of idiots. Um, and that's the other thing that, you know, I, I, I thought about a lot. Um, again, you know, okay, I'll, I'll make this a little political. Um, I think the reason why it's so much easier for people of the right wing mindset to kind of be on the same page and seem like they're a lot or prevalent um, in their ideals, in their ideology, is because they all do have a singular way of thinking. Um, I've seen a study on this where people who have a what's called a, um, a flight or flight, fight or flight um, mentality, um, you know, and they get kind of they fear things more. They, you know, worry about, oh, what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to my family? They tend to fall on um, the right-wing spectrum politically. Um, and the, one of the reasons why is there's actually something in their brain, like chemically, that um, affects that fight-or-flight uh, mindset. Um and so it's something they really can't help if you think about it. And, and it's sad. And, and, and so they group together in this one group thing. Now, on the other hand, on the, on the left-hand spectrum, uh, the reason why it seems that, you know, it's so hard to fight against the right-wing faction is because, you know, left-wing mentality or left-wing ideologies, progressive ideologies, um, you know, any, any type of like 
you know, democratic type of ideologies, it covers a broad spectrum of different ideas. Um, and there are more of us. Um, there are more Democrats than they are Republicans. It's just a fact. Um, and so that being said, the, re the, the only reason why you know, people on the conservative side seems like they're, they seem like there's a lot more of them. It's because they all have that one singular mindset. Us on, you know, people on the left, they, we have very differing mindsets of, of how things should be, you know, what policies we're for. Um, you know, there's some policies we all agree on, but some that we're vastly different on. And some of us, unfortunately, have purity tests um, for certain things like where, Yes, we have a president-elect Joe Biden and vice president-elect Kamala Harris. Um, and they're not, you know, the ideals by far. Um, not in my idea. You know, I there's a lot of things that they've done, each of them, I do not like. But that's the option we were given, and so we got to deal with it. Um, but there's a lot of people on the left who are just not accepting Um they're not progressive enough, so they, you know, they don't want to accept these candidates. You know, the now, you know, president elect, um, and they, it, it's good to um, take them to task, to you know, and, and and hold them accountable for certain things, or like you know, whatever decisions they're going to make, whoever they're going to appoint for certain positions and stuff, uh, in their cabinets and whatnot. Um, but some are, some people are just getting way too purity you know like they like keep that purity test right there and it's like if you don't pass every single one of these points you know you're dead to me or something i don't know um and, and so that's i think what the problem with the left wing has and you've seen that you know stark black and white like um, this these last couple of years especially this last year alone that um you have all these people on one side that super agree with each other um and then you have the other side who are just like broken up into you know these smaller little factions and they all disagree with each other so what do you do with that um but i think the one thing we all uh, can agree on is uh you know um if you see a uh, uh racist son of a bitch you know open up a can of will pass that's like the best meme to end 2020 on it's just, just kind of like beat down the assholes in this world if you need to i'm not an advocate for violence i'm not but um that was satisfying to see that was super satisfying to watch because you know assholes are going to be assholes and sometimes you got to do what you got to do um you know this year uh, not much has been accomplished of course on my end um i just kind of kept to what I was doing. I worked, took pictures, edited. Um, I did open up a, um, a print store on my website. Um, so that's good. Um, I hope to like try to expand it upon that, uh, in the future. Um, what else? Um, yeah, I've been trying to make the best of the year. Um, I, you know, thankfully, I still have uh, a lot of friends I can rely on for things. You know, I still have uh, friends I play games with, and uh, we have fun. Um, one thing I'm missing of this year, though, is um, movies. I hate, I, I, I watch movies at home, but it's not the same. Uh, I miss going to the movie theater. I miss just going places, like going out. Um, although that, that does save me a lot of money this year, I think. So that's, you know, one benefit. There's always a drawback and a benefit. Um but yeah, I miss movie theaters. The last movie I've seen in theaters was uh, the My Hero movie. Um, and that was way back in March or something, right? Yeah. February? I think it was February. Uh, I was going to say something else this year. Um, when I, one other takeaway I could take from this year is... Um, You know, sometimes it's not worth putting up with bullshit. 
Um, I had to kind of face that, face reality of that. Um, the last few months is, you know, we're all dealing with a lot of bullshit right now. Um, it was a pandemic. Um, people are unemployed. People are, unfortunately, um, in danger of being evicted, you know, around this whole country. Uh, we have politicians that don't give a shit. And they want to just push their, you know, go for their own agenda and, you know, don't care about little people. Uh, all those rich people stay rich. Um, and then, you know, we have this danger of this pandemic. Um, and so we're under a lot of stress. So if you see anybody in your life that's creating bullshit for no reason, no logical reason, I should say, um, I think it's okay to ignore them. Um, Cause I've had to deal with that. And, you know, even if it comes to a point where uh, as much as you ignore them, um, you know, you would think at some point they would um, come to a type of sense and say, hmm, he's not talking to me. Maybe I should reach out and see what's going on with them. Maybe they're having issues, something, and just have a conversation. Um, but when you're of a certain mentality where you can't mature to that level and, you know, bring yourself to do something like that, even if you've been friends with somebody for more than two decades, um, you know, um, those people get, it, it's hard to really reconcile with why certain people act that way they do especially when like they can't mature to a level where they can either just stop or um you know they just keep getting worse and worse and worse and uh, try everything they can to get your attention even to the point of uh issuing physical threats of violence against you yeah um, I don't know what type of mentality you have to be in in order to get that level. Um, but in my mind, that's the type of person that needs mental help. Um, they need therapy for sure. Um, you know, that's no way to treat, it's no way to really treat anybody. Um, but it's definitely not no way to treat someone who you treat it like a brother who your own parents treated like a son for many years. Um, it's, it's terrible, but, um, that's what this year has brought us, uh, to a lot of people who got to positions where, um, they lost friends, you know, just either unfriending people who they weren't really close with or, really ending friendships that were lifelong friendships that, um, you know, either ended, you know, for sure, forever, or just going to be ending till, you know, for now, until life gets back to normal, um, or somewhat normal, whatever normal can be. Um, I don't know, I don't have the answers for that. Um, I'm just... I just do what I do every day. I just um, I live my life. I go to work. Um, I do what I can. I help my parents out. Um, you know, and tell my family I love them. You know, I I, uh, I miss hugging my sister. You know, but you know she's a nurse and. Um, you know, she always wears a mask whenever she comes over. Uh, we don't get the physical contact, really. But um, she did get a vaccine, so maybe that will change here soon. Maybe we can get into that. Um, but yeah. 2020 was was quite a year. Um, it's something that I think no one will ever forget. Um I think, though, one of the things I, I keep thinking about is that, you know, you think of, like, fictional stories, 
I hate this going on a tirade here, different things. There's, I'm coming up with this, you know, I didn't really think about what I was going to say for this vlog, but um, I keep thinking about fictional stories. Like this year, I started playing The Last of Us Part 2. And I love the first The Last of Us. But if you remember, if anybody's ever played the first Last of Us game, um, you know that it was a global pandemic and a horrific one where people literally, you know, turned into um, mushroom zombies is the best way I can, uh, you know, phrase it. Um, but the game shows how it's start, how it sparked, but it didn't show the direct aftermath. It jumped 20 years. And it always makes me wonder whenever, you, whenever I see people who do stupid things like have a Christmas church service, um, with a whole entire church filled Nobody wearing masks, and you wonder, it's like, is this how it happens? Is this how, in The Last of Us, how, <laughs> or or any other type of fictional story where it shows, like, some kind of disease or something that is like a pandemic, um, Planet of the Apes, that's a good one. Um, the newer Planet of the Apes movies that kind of show how it kind of happened. Were people just really that dumb where, you know, this is kind of how it starts? Yeah, we're lucky enough where this virus isn't bad enough where we couldn't cure it. Not say cure. We couldn't come up with a vaccine. Like, if it was something that we can just never figure out a vaccine for it, you know, we would have to really take away freedoms. Unfortunately, that's the way I see it, is that um, people were so um, enamored with clutching onto their freedoms that they didn't want these. They thought this was taking away their freedom. And I think that's bullshit because you know what? What takes away your freedom worse than wearing this when you just go outside? Dying. You know, if this was a worst um, virus, and I, I can fully see a virus in the future being worse than this because you know these pandemics that that we you know the world is it's really shitty and um these viruses come out of nowhere because we're we treat the world like crap um we treat animals like crap we, we we eat shit we shouldn't be eating whatever um and our immune systems can only handle so much and sometimes there's things that hit us all collectively that we just can't handle and there's going to be a time, I think, where we're going to have something that is going to be extremely, extremely difficult to deal with. Um, I hope it doesn't happen in my lifetime. But, you know, watching fictional stories like The Last of Us, I could see it playing out like that, where 20 years later, you're living in a new reality of, you have, you know, you don't have a government anymore. You're kind of living in small communities of that are in quarantine zones. You have a, you know, soldiers that kind of like, if they find the disease and you they kill you in, on the streets, um, and you just have to kind of like eke your life, you know, the, any way you can, you can't get back. There's no going back to normal because there's no normal without a cure. Um, that's the way I kind of see those type of stories. Um, will that ever happen to us in reality? I God, I hope not. Um, but it, again, it makes you wonder, in the beginning of The Last of Us, in those 20 year span that they jumped from when the fires happened till the game proper started, um, for people just that stupid, eh, you know, these people have spores on them, who cares, it's mushrooms, if I, if I just act tough, I'm not going to get the spores kidding me. And then you, you know, cough up a spore and you know, mushroom sprouts out of your head. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I can see it now. It's it's not that far out of reality. And I think it's funny. But um, here's hoping to um, a better 2021. Um, you know, handle those racists any way you can. Um, <laughs> those bigots and stuff. Um, and just hopefully, you know, 
call your loved ones, um, talk to them, um, you know, and all, all, out of all the problems we've had, you know, nothing is solved by hating each other. So let's just stop all the hate, really. You know, um, I mean, if you're a bigot, there's no getting over that, you know, just either stop being a bigot or guess what? I'm not going to be your friend anymore. <laughs> Um, especially if you're just being going to be an ignorant bigot, they could just be one, anyways. Um, but you know, don't hate people just to hate. Um, you know, if you're going to dislike a um, mindset, you know, people always say it's like, well, how about you? You guys are supposed to be tolerant. Well, I don't tolerate bigotry, and you shouldn't. Um, so. We should all just love each other no matter what our differences are. Um, and it did show me this year through all the ignorance and stuff that there are good people in this world. There are people that will, um, you know, do what they can to make things better. Um, you know, we all should be very grateful. And I'm very grateful for, um, of course, the healthcare workers. Um, you know, nurses and doctors that are on the front lines and fighting this every day. Um, you know, there are first line defense, and we should thank them all. Um, my sister is one of, and I thank her all the time. Um, even you know, essential workers. You know, any people working in a grocery store. Um, they, they're all putting their uh, selves in danger just to make a shitty living. Um, because they're not getting paid much, and, and we should be getting ha hazard pay if you ask me. Um, but we all should give thanks to those people. Um, you know, it, it goes to show you that people will do what's necessary to uh, keep things as normal as possible, even in the worst of times. Um, it, these are terrible times, and we've lost what. 320,000 people just in this country. I forget the actual numbers of it. Um, you know. You know, I'm not sure of the, the actual numbers, but it's bad. You know, it's well over 300,000 people. I know that. Um, and you see other countries that handle it a lot better than we have. Of course, they don't have the population and the density that we do. But um, the ones that did have pretty dense areas, like, you know, Japan, you know, Tokyo and stuff, they've handled it pretty good. I don't know why we can, anyways. Um, I I foresee something like this, if people were smarter, to just be the norm going forward. Even if you get the flu, wear one. Go ahead. Um, yeah. Um, just look for 2021 to be better, um, be more positive about things. Uh, that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to be more positive. Um, you know, it, it's the world sucks, um, but it is what we make of it. Um, and we just, if we all do better to make the world better, even just for our neighbors, for our family, um, the world can be better. Um, you know, it's a shame that, like, when this pandemic started, um, what was it, like, in big cities, they had, like, a certain time of day, like, 6 o'clock at night, everybody would go out and, like, bang pots and pans and clap and yell in kind of a recognition and thanks to healthcare workers. Um, that died out. Uh, obviously, people were probably tired of doing that every day, but um, I, I hope that the feeling of, of appreciation is still there, even though if they don't show it every day um and i've even gotten into um you know the, the the things are happening with the protests this year i mean that was just that was another whole thing but um yeah it's it's been a year uh i don't know what else to say just other than 2021 better be better uh we we all are in this together
Um, make no doubt about that. Um, so try to reach out to people who um, don't think that they're in this together. They think that, oh, it's just, you know, everyone for themselves, you know, fend for themselves. No, we all have to kind of band together. And this, there's one planet we're on. There's no other planets. We got to, you know, strive to be better. That's the way I think. I don't know. So, happy new year. Uh, happy 2021. Um, and uh, I love you. So, sorry I rambled on for 35 minutes, but <laughs> uh, what else can I say about this this year and hopefully for the next year? Um, I'm going to get more of this twisted tea, though, because it was, it was actually pretty good. It tastes like regular tea. It doesn't taste like booze. <laughs> oh, well. Um, so, that's all for today. Uh, I'll try to make more of these vlogs. I haven't been vlogging much, but I'll try, try to make more um, going forward. But, so, anyways, talk to y'all later. Love you.